show your support, like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am That British Guy. The beginning of the year I did two videos outlining the top five things that I think will happen in the world of professional wrestling and gaming. And a little while ago I did a six month follow up on the wrestling video. So now is the time to do the follow up on the gaming video that I did way back at the beginning of the year. So let's begin with my first point. Sony give a release window for the PlayStation 5. Now, as of the recording of this video, obviously Sony haven't done their kind of post E3, their own kind of press conference thing that they're doing. So we still haven't had too much definitive news on this. At E3, there were a few more announcements regarding the Xbox Scarlet. And that is heavily rumoured to be coming out at the end of 2020. It would make sense for the PlayStation 5 to be coming out at pretty much the same time. And as long as Sony still do mention it at um, their kind of whatever it is in a few months time, then in order to kind of capitalise on that, it would make sense for them to not be releasing a kind of the, the window for its release being sort of too far in advance shall we say so they're going to be announcing it sort of soon and it would make sense for them to be releasing it as of kind of next christmas but as of this recording we do not have any kind of definitive window outside of rumor and innuendo so we will have to kind of stay tuned for this one and hopefully we will learn more before the year is out to my next point nintendo to add snes and n64 games to their eShop. now this is a curious one because so far we have had no snes releases we've been getting nes releases still each month on the kind of the eShop for the switch and they have kind of thought of gone down the remaster route but what they have done is just got in contact with lots and lots of developers and had those games redeveloped for the switch we saw it at e3 it was remasters coming from all over the place a lot of which were japanese only releases at the time or they were part of a series where a couple of the games were released to the West, but not all of them. And they seem to be doing huge kind of bundle packs of these series and then releasing them on the Switch as a remaster. But as such, we do not have any kind of old SNES games to speak of that have been kind of cleaned up and released onto the Switch's online system, which is really curious whether they're trying to make sure that they don't do that to try and get people to buy the SNES Mini, or whether they just don't want to be doing that because it's kind of more work than is necessary, I'm not sure. I'm hoping though that we do at least get those SNES mini games released on there by the end of this year and that kind of starts a wave of SNES and then potentially N64 games being uploaded to their eShop but as of yet it doesn't seem very hopeful. This was kind of more a, a selfish one from my own point of view because some SNES games are either very hard for me to find or they're stupidly expensive so if there was a way of getting a kind of digital version with a monthly subscription then I was going to be all for that but at the moment I'm not sure that's going to be happening moving on Europe to outlaw microtransactions in gaming under gambling laws now I was pulled up in the comments for the video six months ago about this um, it was kind of me miswording, shall we say. So, for microtransactions, read loot boxes. That's basically what I was trying to discuss here. I misworded that and I apologise. Now, over the last kind of six months, there have been a lot of news stories coming out about various companies and governments of certain countries kind of being at loggerheads 
The most recent example of this is EA discussing this with the English Parliament. And not long after those discussions, there was then a story of a family who had been cleaned out of over £500 out of their account because their father unwittingly kind of saved his credit card details after buying FIFA 19 for his family on the Switch and getting them a little kind of ultimate team pack and then the kids just kept using his credit card details again and again and again in order to try and get their favourite player and after £550 they weren't able to and the family realised that there was something wrong when their card got declined. There have also been various other bits of news about the links of this to gambling and there have been gamers who kind of got sucked into this who found that it was kind of a gateway to gambling for them or it was a form of gambling for them and they ended up spending thousands and thousands of pounds or dollars because most of them were American. So I feel like we are kind of gaining traction with this whether it will be completely europe wide by the end of the year i think that was probably a bit of a long shot on my part but it certainly wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility for there to be some serious tweaks to games like fifa 2020 when that comes out later this year where there are certain features that have been removed in certain countries like the netherlands and belgium because of their laws over there and how they are being interpreted. So watch this space for that one. Next up, remakes of Xbox exclusives. Now, as I said in the original video, I am not and have never been a Xbox player, never owned them. I've done, again, a little bit of looking into this and there are a few bits and pieces coming up in terms of their exclusives, things like Gears 5, things like Halo making a return, obviously we've got Forza, and Ori and the Will of the Wisp, as well as a few other bits and pieces from sort of smaller developers. Now these don't seem to be gaining the same amount of press and fanfare, shall we say, as the likes of A Death Stranding, A Last of Us 2, um, a Final Fantasy 7 remake, as we see on the flip side on the PlayStation. But it is good that they are still kind of moving forward with this. I'm hoping for their sake that it's something that they can really get on board with with the Xbox Scarlet partially for their own fortunes and hopefully that will also keep pushing Sony on as well. Basically what I don't want, again from a selfish point of view, I don't want the PlayStation 5 to be the new PlayStation 3 where they kind of sit on their laurels and allow Microsoft to take a massive lead like they did with the 360. If you are a kind of more dedicated Xbox player and you've got more kind of knowledge about this sort of thing, please let me know in the comments below. As I say, I don't claim to be an expert in this field and any more kind of knowledge and understanding from you guys to me would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And my final point. Death Stranding and Final Fantasy VII Remake to be released in Q4. Oh, I was so close with this one. Firstly, Death Stranding, yes, that will be releasing in November this year. Just getting in there for all the big Christmas sales. We can kind of understand that, it makes perfect sense. As I said in the original video, I was not expecting the entire Final Fantasy VII Remake to be released this year, just the kind of first section of it. And the first section, which we have been told is just Midgar, will be releasing in March 2020. So, it was that close, shall we say. That close. Still massively excited for both of these games. It's nice to finally get release dates for both of them. And the fact that there's a little bit of a gap between them is a good thing because it means I can kind of save up for one and then play it and then save up for the other rather than have them both release within sort of a week or two of each other and me not have enough time to really play either of them. I believe as well 
that The Last of Us will be being released in February. I don't think we have a definitive date for that yet as of the recording of this video, but again, that has been strongly rumoured to be being released in February. So getting one in February and March next year, especially before Cyberpunk then comes out as well. It's going to be a very, very nice start to 2020, shall we say. So there we go, a quick look at my kind of early predictions at the beginning of the year. A lot of things still in flux. A couple of things probably not likely to happen, be them on the Switch side and regarding the loot boxes. But fingers crossed for a PlayStation 5 kind of release window being announced at some point later in the year. If you have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly and also on Facebook at That British Guy 86. Till next time, I've been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.